This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South Today, a Dunedin resident is deeply unhappy with the amount of animal fouling on a prominent city walkway. Emergency Management Otago has shown off two new all-purpose tents to help in all sorts of scenarios. And predicted six metre storm swells slammed into the seawall at St Clair, providing an exciting evening for many. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Sophie Morris. Dog excrement scattered along a footpath is spoiling the enjoyment of a popular Dunedin walkway for some families. Antonia Wood has taken a can of water-soluble spray paint to highlight the problem. She identified over 200 deposits of dog feces along a half-kilometre stretch of the West Harbour walkway. Antonia Wood and her family are regular users of Dunedin's West Harbour walkway but she's disappointed with the amount of dog excrement along the path, with the risk of getting the unhygienic stuff on her family's shoes. The area is littered with dog poo on the walkway, on the side of the walkway, in the picnic areas on the side of the walkway, and it's become a non-family friendly area, which is a pity because this is supposed to be a family friendly walkway. Wood and her family decided to make other users of the walkway aware of the issue by using water-soluble spray paint to highlight every pile of faeces along a short section of the path. In 500 metres we counted 217 dog poos or piles of dog poo. She says she'd like to see dog walkers be more responsible, especially as a rubbish bin is provided for the public. And there's a wheelie bin at the start of the walkway where they can put their dog's poo um, after their walk or if they're going the other direction just take the bag home with them. I'd like them to watch their dogs while they walk them um, because sometimes if the dog's behind they're not going to see the dog doing a poo. Yeah, We'd just love to use the walkway without worrying about stepping in their dog's poo and the poo getting everywhere on our buggies, bikes, shoes, cars, home carpet. The Dunedin City Council says it hasn't received any specific complaints about dog faeces along the pathway. In Dunedin, the South today. A person was taken into custody following a police chase that ended in Dunedin late this morning. Police say a driver failed to stop when signalled while driving on State Highway 1 between Palmerston and Wakwaiiti at about 11am. Police were seen pursuing the driver north of the city and on the northern motorway heading into Dunedin. A motorist in front of the pursued vehicle says the driver kept trying to pass and almost crashed into oncoming traffic. An ODT photographer at the scene says the driver of the pursued car struck a roadside bank, damaging the vehicle, which then turned around and limped north before the car came to rest on a traffic island. Two tents worth nearly $100,000 have been purchased by Emergency Management Otago to help people in crisis situations. The Covertex emergency shelters are versatile and come fully stocked for most situations. Set to provide shelter from the storm, a $92,000 investment by Emergency Management Otago is to provide emergency shelter as needed in the Otago region. Um, these packages, uh, there are 11 of them, uh, have been uh, delivered throughout the country um, at a cost of about $46,000 for, for each package. We've been able to secure two of them um, for Otago, which is, which is great for the region. Um, looking to, to deploy uh, these tents, um, one um, to be stored uh, in, in the coastal region, also on the coast, uh, looking after uh, communities there, and then one um, to be deployed uh, into central Otago, Queenstown Lakes. The two new tents come fully stocked, including equipment like generators and lights. Emergency Management Otago Group Manager Matt Alley says they intend to share the resources with other agencies as required. We can use them in a community setting as a shelter, a civil defence centre. They've also got flexibility as you see 
Next door we've got St John's with us here. Uh, they are available for, um, for our stakeholders and partners, so we can utilise them, be it in a search and rescue context or for fire and emergency, so they are really a, a really versatile package. Ali says there have been many emergency situations in recent times where the tents could have been a valuable resource. Well, I mean, I can think of some situations where we could have utilised them in, in the recent, recent past, and when we consider the fire at Lake, at Lake Ohau and, and um, being able to to move into particularly smaller communities that have limited resources and, and facilities and being able to augment those relatively quickly. Um, just, just absolutely purpose-built for, for those scenarios. The multi-purpose temporary shelters were erected recently in the Dunedin Army Hall for stakeholders and potential users. In Dunedin, the South today. Stage two of Mini Toto Area School's $11 million rebuild is underway. A large digger was used with the demolition of the school's senior block earlier this week. The new senior block will house five classrooms and is scheduled to be completed early next year. The first phase of the rebuild was the technology building, housing music, science, food technology and hard materials, which opened last month. The entire rebuild of the school is due to be finished by the end of the year. Predicted large sea swells rolled into St Clair yesterday evening. Many people visited the Dunedin City Beach about the time of the predicted high tide and weren't disappointed. Waves smashing into the seawall at Dunedin's St Clair Beach drew squeals of joy from many sightseers. Yeah, they love it. It's neat, the power, the spray, awesome. Young Perry was among those enjoying the spectacle and rare thrill of having massive waves create huge plumes of water above their heads. And he knew exactly why people had come to the beach. The giant swell. Young Perry admitted to being a little scared of the huge waves, but says his dad was more nervous. His father, Pascal Saker, says sometimes it's tough being a responsible adult, knowing you've got oh, yeah. to look after the youngsters. Uh, pretty exciting. Yeah. You've got to keep an eye on them. They get a little bit, um, they get quite brave, sort of uh, more, um, what, what would say, ambition and ability, maybe, I think. A storm tide red alert had been predicted by the National Institute of Water and Atmospheric Research, commonly known as NIWA, for the southeastern coastline. Nigel Young says their two children were headed straight for the showers. <laughs> yeah, I think showers, yeah, they're okay though. It's been cold. It's a bit warmer now, but spectacular. NIWA had predicted a six metre swell for the Otago coast earlier in the week, and the Southern Ocean lived up to the predictions. While some braved the elements and got soaked, others filmed from the relative safety of their cars. In Dunedin, the South Today. Still to come on the South Today, a laser system is to be set up to detect the height of vehicles for an Oamaru overbridge. And we meet the international umpire doing it for the love of sport in Gore.
our TV, our favourite babysitter. But it can be tough keeping up with what our Tamariki are watching. Uh, luckily, the Broadcasting Standards Authority has made some smart changes to the classification labels. Ooh! Plus changes to the time of day certain rated shows will air and awesome new parental lock features, meaning your babysitter's job is safe. Find out more at safeviewing.co.nz. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Welcome back. The netball game in Gore was recently whistled by international netball umpire Christy Simpson. She's also been an umpire at a New Zealand versus Australia test match and recently received her third ILT Southland Sport Official of the Year award. It's fantastic to see Christy Simpson here today. She's umpiring on her weekend off from ANZ and fantastic that she was awarded the Administrator of the Year at the Southland Sports Awards last night. Um, everybody in East and South and appreciates Christy coming back um, to umpire in the Premier Year Games today. Great to see her here. I do it because I love netball and it's a challenge and it's great to be involved in a game that I enjoy. I've been doing the ANZ competition, this is my 12th season. Sorry, and I've been officially since way before that, since I was about 10 or 11, so a few years. <laughs> Following a number of trucks crashing into an overbridge on Oamaru's Harbour Street, a laser system is to be set up to detect the height of vehicles. Last November, a car was crushed by a large truck that struck the overbridge and rolled onto its side. The incident was the third time a truck had crashed into the overbridge in 18 months. $70,000 is to be spent on a system that will trigger a warning message clearly visible to drivers of oversized vehicles. The new system was expected to be installed over the next few months. St John cadets based in Oamaru have been put through their paces in a series of tests. The competitions included a written examination and a marching component. 45 St John cadets took part in a competition in Oamaru recently, which included them being confronted with simulated gruesome scenarios so they could be judged on their first aid skills. Many of the cadets say they have already accompanied paramedics to real life situations. There's been like um, there's things been a, that you've seen, like car crashes yeah, and you've wanted that. to go help. But yeah, there's been happens. occasional places where I um, couldn't really help them because there's already paramedics on scene. So. The competition also included marching drills, which the cadets say encourage self-esteem. That's not great drill. <laughs> to show pride in our uniform mainly yeah. and to show pride in ourselves, but yes, it's pretty good. The competition also included a written exam. In Awamaru, the South Today. After the break in the South Today, ski fields open in the South and we check out the weather. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life.
A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. MTF Finance can help you turn the key on your next vehicle with a loan made just for you. TC's and lending criteria apply. Welcome back. Kone at peak open today for the first time this season, having received a good 20 centimetre dump of snow. The ski field says it was able to add to the fresh fall by using snow guns. The field was able to run its Coronet Express and Meadows chairlifts along with the conveyor carpets on beginner slopes. Kajona will reopen today, although wind has created snow drifts which are about half a metre deep in some places. At the Snow Farm Cross Country Ski Area, staff are working hard to open the facilities by Saturday. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. A Dunedin resident is deeply unhappy with the amount of animal fouling on a prominent city walkway. Emergency Management Otago has shown off two new all-purpose tents to help in all sorts of scenarios. And predicted six metre storm swell slammed into the seawall at St. Clair, providing an exciting evening for many. And now for a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome, Craig. Good evening. Good evening. Now, if you're a rate pay, you're going to love tomorrow's paper because oh, okay. there's plenty of council stories in it. Um, the government today unveiled its plans for uh, future water services for New Zealand. It's, it's calling it Three Waters Reform. Um, it's pretty heavy going, but pretty significant for ratepayers, um, particularly in Dunedin, where we've had lots of problems, I guess, with our water, particularly Wako Aiti Way. Um, so they're planning to establish four entities that are going to run uh, all the water services for the country. That's uh, drinking water, uh, waste water and storm water. And uh, one entity for the South Island. Um, so that, that's a big change, taking really the responsibility away from the councils and putting it in the hands of these entities. Um, we've spoken to basically all of the councils from Timaru South and pretty mixed response. They're still wading through pages and pages of documents, as you can imagine, at the moment. And yeah, a bit, a bit cynical about what it might mean for them as well, uh, not necessarily wanting to lose the responsibility. Some areas have just upgraded their water system as well and, and can't see the benefit of spending even more money on it. So yeah, a lot of water to go under the bridge, I guess you could say, at this stage. But um, yeah, it's certainly a big discussion topic out there. 
Uh, the DCC has also finally approved its 10-year plan today. Uh, Mayor Hawkins, uh, Aaron Hawkins, very excited about that, saying it's going to build a resilient city and encourage people to come here. I'm not sure whether we want too many more, but <laughs> um, so they've also approved, approved a rates increase of 9.8%. So that won't uh, please some people, but lots happening in the next 10 years. Some of the main things are going, to, of course, be the, the changes to rubbish and recycling, which they've uh, signalled, and also a, a transport package around the Dunedin Hospital. So lots of changes there over coming years. So. Um, they need to front foot that and make sure they get things in place before that happens. So uh, we'll have full details about that tomorrow. Right. Heading to the south, uh, Tim, Shelp, uh, Tim Shadbolt, the Invercargill Mayor, has caused a bit of a stir in a council meeting where he, um, he asked councillors what would happen if he resigned. It sort of came out of the blue, really. Um, he's been under pressure, as you well know of late. Um, people saying that perhaps he's not up to it anymore. His performance has been held into question. And his health, of course, isn't as great as it, as it should be either. So. Um, yeah, he caught everyone off guard by that, but didn't elaborate any further to suggest he was going to resign, just wanted to know what would happen. They, they, they told him that it would be a by-election of some sort or another, but um, we've tried to talk to, to Sir Tim to see whether he would expand on that, but he's unavailable at the moment. So, uh, yeah, I guess we just watch the space because, um, yeah, I think something's going to give down there shortly, so we'll see what happens. All right. And just finally on the sporting front, we've got North Otago heading up to Napier tonight to try and bring the Ranfurly Shield back to Oamaru. Hayden Meikle's very excited about it, being a, a, an Oamaru man himself. <laughs> Don't like the chances, but you never know. Uh, amateurs against semi-professionals, so it's, it's always a tough ask. But they're, you know, tough little side and we wish them all the best. We'll have updates on our website tonight and uh, full wrap in tomorrow's paper. All right, very Thank good. You. Thank you, Craig. And now for a look at the weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by Mole Map. Looking at the situation, a long spell of fine weather is coming up for southern districts as an anticyclone directs light westerly airflow over the region. Expect some heavy frost inland and some cloud at times about the coast. Starting at the northwest of the South Island, mostly sunny here with 13 degrees in Greymouth and Westport. To the northeast, sunshine for the region with 13 degrees in Nelson and Blenheim. Mostly sunny in Canterbury as well with 11 degrees in Kaikoura, Christchurch and Ashburton. To the southern towns, light winds, fine conditions and 9 degrees for the Catlins, Balclutha, Lumsden and Gore. To the central lakes area, light winds and fine conditions here as well with 7 degrees in Queenstown, 8 degrees in Wanaka, 10 degrees in Alexandra and 9 degrees in Tiano. To the northern towns, Light winds and fine conditions with 11 degrees in Timaru and 10 degrees in Oamaru, Twizel and Amarama. And Dunedin cloudy tonight with south westerlies dying out in a low of 3 degrees. Fine and often sunny tomorrow but some light cloud at times. Light frost possible at night, a high of 10 and a low of 1. Similar on Friday, a high of 11 and a low of 1. And in Invercargill, some cloud tonight with a low of 1. Mostly fine tomorrow with a mix of sunny periods, some cloud and moderate westerly winds, a high of 10 and a low of 3. Similar on Friday, a high of 11 and a low of 3. That's all for our news this Wednesday. For the latest news from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz or follow Channel 39 on Facebook and YouTube. Thanks for joining us. Ka kite anua. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.